very sorry not to be there to see to see the exhibition, to meet everybody, and uh, to have installed also myself directly the the pieces. Uh, I want to say that it's a great honor to be in a museum designed by Tada Wando. And also, it's a great pleasure to know that the Her Art Museum has decided to, to give me an exhibition in such a beautiful and prestigious place. The, the museum is such a perfect uh, space, you know, so clean, so uh, uh, perfect that uh, the contrast with my rusted sculptures work very well. You see, uh, if it was not like a very clean place, uh, the sculptures don't come out very well. Um, you know, it's not uh, valorizing so because the contrast is, good in, is not good enough. I saw some angled pieces and I saw some pieces outside, the random combination of lines. Everything works very well. You see, I work in a very intuitive way. I constantly look for a new, new way of doing art. I'm uh, very bored with, uh, like, some artists are doing the same painting all their life because they, they are successful, because they sell it very well. It's like having a job. To me, I hate that. I want to live the adventure of art. And um, you know that uh, I started very early. I was 19 years old when I started making relatively radical work. Radical, I mean by that, uh, works that were uh, very different from what we see usually in the art world. And all my life, I've been trying to do that. Now, the move from painting to sculpture happened uh, after the 70s when I when after a period of, of stopping, I was I stopped being an artist for six years, you know, um, for theoretical reasons. Uh, I thought that either you create art or you don't do anything. Uh, practicing art is a bore. I'm against it. So I thought that I went very far in my theories and in my activity during the year 66 to 70. And so I decided that I should stop. When I started again, it was a very, I should say, visceral need, you know. I, I had so much energy, I wanted to do, to go again and start, you know. But of course, I was very much afraid that what I was going to do would not be worth doing it, you know. I, I wanted to do something very important. So at the beginning, I was hiding my work always. I was not showing it to anybody until the day that I got invited at the famous German exhibition Documenta. So then I started to exhibit it and those pieces were uh, presenting arcs, angles and straight lines on canvas. So I worked like that for about three years. And then one day, by chance, while I was cutting a stretcher, the stretcher on which I put the canvas, you know, I, I had a piece of wood falling on the floor and I thought, and it, it had the shape of, the, of an arc. So I thought, hey, how about that? How about presenting the arc directly on the wall and not having the support of the canvas? So I make a try, I paint it black, I put it on the wall and I thought that it's a good idea. So I did that with the arcs, I did that with the straight lines and also with the angles. And um, then a major move happened when I started to do the indeterminate line in 1979. I made one indeterminate line, very free, you know, a composition like this. Mm. And then I thought, huh, but that doesn't belong to what I've been doing because it's not geometrical anymore. So I'm going to, anyway, look, I'm going to do it anyway. We'll see. In a, in, if in a few months uh, it's a mistake, I will stop. If it's interesting, I will go on. So I started to make those indeterminate line. And one day I made one which was superposing, how do you say, superimposed on itself, you know, which meaning that it was starting to give thickness to the line because it was round and the round was coming on, on the other round and so on. And then I thought, oh, what about making them in, the, in space? So I went to Canal Street. I was living in New York in those days. I went to Canal Street and I bought some uh, pieces of uh, metal along like this. I went back to my studio and I just go like this. I put, that on, I put them on the table. I take some pictures and I'm thinking, ah, that's interesting. Perhaps I should do that. You see, you understand that I always have this need to experiment, to see where I can go, where I can go in directions, of course, 
which have never been explored before. And this is how I came up with, uh, uh, you know, this is how I developed uh, my, my sculptures. And then one day I was invited to this exhibition in a museum in France, which was exhibiting some about 20 international artists. And um, I didn't have the money to make the sculpture big enough for the museum. So I decided that I was going to make a plan, a plan industrial drawing, you see, the drawing seen from the top, from the side, you know, like all those things with coats, you know, like the dimensions and everything. Very precise, not very artistic, just pure industrial drawing. But when I saw that, I realized that perhaps it would be more interesting to present informations about an object than to present the object. Everybody was making objects. All the minimalist artists, they were presenting some cubes, some squares, some, you know, spheres, whatever, you know, they all had their variations. And I thought, how about getting involved with information. And I started to make industrial drawings and I started to make uh, uh, mathematical diagrams because I thought they were so far away from what we know in art. And this is what I'm yeah. looking for. You have to understand, doing art that looks like art is, is, is boring. Creating something that doesn't look like art that might eventually one day be accepted as art is exactly what excites me. There is a Duchamp attitude there, but that's another story one day, perhaps if we meet, I will tell you my story with Marcel Duchamp, with whom I spent a lot of time. But uh, so I thought that the use of mathematics was suddenly getting me in a place where nobody went before. All art before me, before that first mathematical diagram painting, all art had been figurative, you know, representation of what we see, or abstract, but never a diagram like this. This is a new category. This doesn't allow the interpretation, for example. You know, a mathematical diagram is very precise. If with your culture in China, you read a mathematical diagram, and if I read it, we will have the same information. Where if we talk about any, uh, um, if we talk about an abstract painting, you might see or think about things, but I will not think myself. So here we are into what I call monosemi. Mono means one semi signification. So we are in a very new category, new category. So I developed all that. And then when I went into sculptures, I took a lot of freedom in the, in the configurations of my work. But you can see in my sculptures that when I make an arc, there is always the engraving arc of 230 degrees. And if I say multiply by five, it means that the sculpture is made of five arcs. So what do we get here? We get something which is not totally monosemic, but which is auto-referential. That sculpture talks about itself. This sculpture has nothing to do with, with the outside world. No reference to anything, uh, you know, ideology or a copy of nature, whatever, no. The sculpture, what you see, is what it is precisely.